جشن آمد رسول الله الله جشن آمد I heard the gentle whispers of Ramadan a few days ago and my heart began turning yearning that this year there will be spiritual change but in reply the devil responded no you're sinful hypocritical and dishonest with that dark part of your heart that nobody knows this promise is not for you his words echoed within within internal caverns my hopes became despondent until Ramadan spoke the sayyid of months echoed entering with a myriad of blessings barakahs and benedictions but also present the prescription to all my ailments and afflictions see Ramadan speaks directly to those inner illnesses with love and blissfulness o oh, broken hearted ones i see your conditions and i am here to comfort you and care for you all be it saint or sinner I present to you the elixirs through prayer, reflection and zikr, recitation of scripture 2046 do not despair he knows empty your stomachs and feed your soul through fasting your ego shall be constrained demonic entities changed generate light with prophetic praise this is the time for your healing to begin once again And as you witness the crescent shaped moon in the night sky you will also witness mercy clemency and forgiveness no matter your position your current or past life i come with hope embrace the honor and blessings the majesty of allah ar rahman has gifted once again to us all no matter how far you have gone or what you have done ramadan is here to say come come back home بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وخاتم النبيين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين respected elders beloved youngsters assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu all praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa taala the creator the sustainer the cherisher the nourisher and we send of course our endless salutations greetings and love upon the master of mankind muhammad mustafa habibullah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that was asim the poet today's guest on drive time on ramadan 87.7 fm what's going on fab how are you all i hope you're well welcome to another program of drive time with me your host with the most well apparently Uh, brother Irfan M and uh, we have got a very special guest for everyone not just the youngsters uh, on drive time today and i will uh, introduce him in a moment but uh, folks tell me how your day's been tell me how your week is going and let me give you the numbers if you want to take part in today's call so our in studio guest is Asim the poet sorry Asim the poet and uh, he'll be taking your calls on 0116482086 or if you've got a question then you want to send us a whatsapp you can do so by uh, dialing 0774884 let me start that again okay the whatsapp number is 0774885055 right guys um hope you had a good day i've had a good day feeling a bit tired now and uh, it's not as cold as yesterday but that's good and i've got akil smiling at me from the studio which is always a blessing mashallah allah always keep you smiling akil and he just told me don't you ever try to leave or i'll sort you out so anyway i've got no choice i'm stuck here i'm here for life Listen but I wanted to share something with you yesterday which I forgot to do right so it's been a bit of a momentous weekend in the Murrajani household okay so on Saturday my daughter my 16 year old daughter got her first part time job and it was her first day so she was really excited yeah round of applause she was really excited and uh, she now understands what it's like to earn money so uh, yeah all the complaints are going to be coming in very very soon and then yesterday my son started work experience so i got both of my kids working right now woohoo <laughs> another round of applause there but anyway enough about me let's move on to our guest today so Today's guest is an award-nominated spoken word artist. Uh, he introduced and he began the show there with one of his uh, his poems. He's uh, a spoken word artist, a host, a singer, a published author, a flow poet, a creative workshop mind, and a motivational speaker. Not only that, he's been featured across various media platforms, including film, radio, and the BBC Four radio show Poets in the Pulpit: A Kaleidoscope of Stories. More recently he's just published his first poetry book and he delivers 
Um, or he talks about rather a wide range of topics from hard hitting stories to light hearted poems. But at the heart of all of his messages and his poems is a, uh, a wish to inspire and motivate others. He's also part of a poetry group, a praise poetry circle, and a Nasheed group called Asalikun, which have been going on for more than two decades. I am indeed, of course, talking about the one, the only Asim the Poet. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Asim. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Listen, an absolute pleasure having you on the program. Jazakumullah khair for coming in. Really good to see you. And I'm loving the garbs, man. I don't know oh, if you guys can see that on the camera, but Asim's decked out in this really nice traditional cultural thobe uh, lovely sort of dark olive green and he's, he's he's wearing it well mashallah he's wearing it well look at us yeah Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. good listen um how you been i'm not really well i'm not really well yes uh, this ramadan's been very uh, interesting so far um haven't actually written any poems which is quite surprising for myself but alhamdulillah otherwise really good so far good stuff we'll, we'll talk about poems in a moment but i do believe congratulations are in order that you just recently got married yes that's right alhamdulillah Okay, so Mrs. Asim, if you're listening in, and you should be listening in as a newly married wife, uh, let us know how hubby's doing. Yeah, send us a text on 077-488-55055. Now, Asim, listen, a real pleasure to have you here. Um, I want to talk about how you got into poetry to start off with. Alhamdulillah. So, um, looking about 16, 17 years ago, as a child, um, being very quiet, very shy, uh, even bullied at school, I came very much into my shell, knowing that I always felt a bit uncomfortable being in that position. And alhamdulillah, when I started learning about Islam, hearing the stories about how our sahaba were, were always standing up for justice, always going ahead to speak about respect and love, and also the character, of course, our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, himself, alayhi wa sallam. teaching us to always stand up against oppression and being... Uh, for that justice I found myself in situations where I had to speak out And eventually the more I started learning about Islam The more it gave me that confidence in order to build myself up And I found the greatest expression for myself was through poetry Being able to write even just for myself and having those notes to me Being able to express what's inside my mind and my heart Even if I couldn't have the courage to speak to somebody about it Even if it was just a group of friends and the more I started writing, the more I found this love of Islam that was being expressed more than anything else. And one day, I remember going at a mosque program and the imam, the Molana, didn't turn up. And unfortunately, um, all the audience were there and they were waiting. And I just took it upon myself to go up, grab the mic and just start reciting poetry that I had on my phone. And alhamdulillah, when the Molana came back, he actually heard about this story and he's like really inspired he said you know what you should encourage me a lot alhamdulillah just to say keep doing this and alhamdulillah from there going to community centers performing all over the country headlining places performing with um famous poets as well as nasheed artists and other featured speakers um being an author inducted as flow poet and so on and so on and so on it's just blown up so i give so much shukr for where i am today. oh much i mean and obviously you know jazakallah for spitting some bars at the very beginning i think that's what they say right that's the youngsters right. this uh, man spitting some bars yeah. but um i mean poetry amazing you know incredible as a child or growing up did you read any poetry just you know as as for, for leisure or were you did you really sort of have an interest in it and and was this Learning about Islam, it, it triggered something, obviously. But, you know, what was it like before then? Did you read much poetry, actually, write much no, poetry? No, no nothing, nothing at all. I, I actually got a D in English literature. I just oh. about scraped, yeah, I just about scraped uh, English language on C. Uh, this is back in the day. It's obviously a different grading system now. Um, but yeah, nothing at all. It was nothing, no inspiration at all for poetry. There was absolutely nothing. And it's only when I start learning about Islam start learning about the love of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I wanted to express that because I found myself in especially back in the days as you know that when it comes to our audiences um, in mosques and uh, what we traditionally would see is that they would be a lot of Urdu speaking yes and we never had anything for English speaking especially for the younger generation and I found myself being in um, when it's Nasheed's reciting Urdu I wouldn't really understand what's going on and only up till um, I took it upon myself instead of learning Urdu, which isn't my my native tongue, to start writing my own, and that's kind of how it all started from that sense. 
Okay, well, we've had a text coming already, uh, Asim. So, mashallah, I'm so pleased to listen in and hear Asim. I know of him during the big, greater writer days, one of our OGs and still is. This is all, of course, behind the screen, but would love to listen to him live, inshallah. Keep up the great work and good to see you're doing so well. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, I think that's a sister who said that. Jazakallah khair for that message. Um, brilliant stuff. I mean, poetry. So, I mean, it takes some some guts to stand up in front of a congregation if the imam doesn't turn up and you think you know what i need to handle the situation right here and you just step up to the mic and you start reciting what i mean sometimes that kind of if you've never done that before it can seem quite daunting so yeah. what was going through your mind as as you're about to to stand up and and you know keep the the crowd on side yeah i still remember that very day <laughs> to be honest um it was more so looking at everyone they're here for a reason we come for the gatherings in mosques uh, uh, for the love of Allah and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to learn more about Islam, to yeah. learn more about our faith, our beliefs and uh, how to better ourselves in our faiths in itself. And I just found myself being in a silent room. People are talking and they're not doing what, this, what they've intended to do. And rather having that as the main focus point. And that's what tends to happen until an event starts, until the speaker's there. People are more drawn in. I just took it, I just, for whatever reason, I just felt compelled to stand up, walk up to the stage and just start reciting. It's like as if this was your moment. Basically, you, you yeah. Kind of destiny is calling. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, look, I'm sh we're all glad that you did because it's now meant that you've become an established and accomplished artist and uh, getting another text today from Brother Shahadat. He is sending Asim the Poet Salam. So a good friend of mine is uh, is listening in. So Jazakallah Khair Shahadat for your um, your support today. But um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I come from a creative sort of background. I like uh, creativity. I, I like writing. So for me, sometimes if I'm, if I need to get something off my chest or if I'm feeling inspired, I'll just write, sit and write. And um, I had a similar sort of um, experience where I wrote about someone who had reverted to Islam and their journey. And it was just the most, um, uh, it was just the most uh, surreal and, and things. But, you know, enough about me. We're here to talk about you today. But um, what inspires you? What, where do you sort of draw your inspiration? Apart from the obvious, which is Islam and, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But, is it a case of like, you know, you're walking in the street or you're, you're at work or you're at home and then something just hits you and you grab your pen and paper? Just talk us through that process. Do you know what? It's exactly what you mentioned. Really? I could be in the middle of a gym workout, stop halfway through and I think of a word or a line or something. I have to stop, capture that on my phone. And then once I go home, when I get an opportunity to write, I'll just explore and expand from there. Yeah, and, and it I, just sort of comes and yeah, flows out, yeah? That's exactly Brilliant. it. I mean, I'd love to say it would be in like a cavern somewhere, lights are out, little candles burning and writing away. I'd love to say something like that, but it's absolutely not. It's actually just any time, anywhere, any place. Something could come. I could come across a situation. I could be inspired by somebody's story, how they've uh, uh, overcome the odds. But mostly, as going back to the original thing that I mentioned, for me, the main inspiration comes from Rasulullah himself. Because... One of the things, if you note, and it's very, I, I like to think it's actually very undervalued. He motivated and was very positive in his nature, always smiling, always inspiring, always giving hope. And everything in Islam, the main thing about it, everything was spoken, everything was written, everything was uh, told to people. And if I can do that through my works, whether it's inspiring just one soul, I feel like I've done something, alhamdulillah. That's, that's a really important point you make there about positivity in islam so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the quran you know do not despair i am here i am closer to you than your jugular vein and rasul sallallahu alayhi wa throughout his whole life you know this is a person who lost his parents at a very young age um was always facing you know sort of so social struggles he, he he lost his children um and you know throughout but he never ever let that get him down. He never sort of said, you know, Ya Allah, I can't do this or I don't have this within me. He had that firm belief and that faith that better days are ahead. And he also, he, as far as we, his ummah, are concerned, he thinks the best of us. So he's always telling us or he's always defending us. He's always um, making, making us feel that, you know what, we are the best of nations. There is nothing that we can't overcome 
if we are united and if we are firm in our belief. Subhanallah. What does that mean to you? Subhanallah, everything. That is absolutely everything. If you look at the story of Miraj, one of the things I've learned from one of my inspirations of poetry, a poet, uh, Amir Suleiman, uh, based in America, one of the things he talked about is in the Miraj itself, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is with Allah, with our Creator, with Al Wadud Himself, Al Wadud and Al Habib together. If that was me, I would never come back. <laughs> If I am with my Lord, I am happy. I have accomplished everything I need to. I will never come back to this dunya. But he came back to us. And that is love. We don't tend to really contemplate this, pro- this process. And I, I have actually wrote a poem about this. I, I'd like to think this is the greatest miracle of all. Like mm. he split the moon. He's um, the, the manifestation of the Quran itself. And so on and so forth. The endless miracles that we know. But the fact that he came back to us... That is love. How can that not inspire any heart to say that you are wanted? There is hope in this world. And there always is going to be some sort of motion, motivation, positivity through understanding not just this story, but all his lifetime itself. Okay, so um, I'd like to ask you to recite a poem now for our listeners. But before we do that, one more question before we go into uh, your next piece. Um, and you know, if we look at the history of Islam, there's a lot of philosophers, a lot of poets themselves you know whether they're arabic uh, sorry arabian poets or poets from the the indian pakistan con- subcontinent and you know people like alama iqbal have written extensively about um, deen within their poetry um, but you mentioned before a lot of that was in the urdu language now sorry. urdu as we know is a very majestic very sweet very regal language um, what what is how much have you looked into the past and the history of poetry within Islam to, I suppose, guide what you're doing right now? With regards to that, I remember when I first heard a current poet, before I answered the question, I remember hearing first the current poet, Amir Suleiman, as I mentioned. He was one of the biggest inspirations I had when I saw what he did. And he said one thing but meant many things. It was secrets within the poetry itself. Yeah. I start understanding what we normally understand as poetry. When, you know, when, someone's, when I tell people that I'm a poet, Oh, they, think, they look at me in such a strange way. Oh, the sky is blue, the sun is, you know, the sun is shining, the grass is green, birds are singing. They That's don't really true. understand it. It's not that traditional. It's not like that. Poetry is so deep that you could have secrets within secrets within Quran poetry. And I understood that from an English speaker because, as mentioned, Urdu is not my mother tongue. But when I start looking at things with uh, things like Qawwali, or other nasheeds and nats in different languages, not specifically just for Urdu, but even Persian or Arabic, you start to understand that there's so many levels within poetry itself, all explaining love in different ways or whatever point they're trying to get come across. And I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, and I'm no expert, but there must be a lot of metaphorical language, which, you know, to the untrained eye, as it were, you, you probably wouldn't understand the meaning straight away. Yep. It's after you understand the context and, and where the... The, the writer or the composer is coming from, yep. you, you, you then begin to appreciate what they're talking about. Absolutely. And if you even look at today's generation, again, no way I'm here to promote any other, uh, other type of uh, genres. But if you look at things like hip-hop and rap, traditionally when you see it, there's a lot of levels of wordplay and rhyme schemes and things like this. But in, of course, in other languages, historically, it was the same concept as well. Mm. But just learned in a different way and taught in a different way and understood in a different way. But it's the same concept that's just been now echoed in, a, in different manifestations that we see today. Okay, so uh, I'm going to hand over to you now, Asim, and if you would uh, do us the honor of reciting another one of your pieces, please. Uh, this piece itself is actually part of a book that I'm due to launch in Rabi al Awal. So it's actually a bit of an inside scoop. Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In this state of reverence for his eminence, I fall into my element. Poetical eloquence for his majesty himself. It's evident. Delving into flows of lyricism, intricately rising in increments, the mysticism is in my instrument, the pen forges magniloquent luminosity, manifesting prophecies as a prodigy of the genuine rhetoricians, prescribing spiritual medicine, adrenaline, regimented without cerebration, expression without hesitation, my only station are such devoted favours. With honours awarded and blessings assorted, such additions are avoided because the emphasis is him. Al-Mudathir, 
Al-Mubashir, Al-Mutawakkil, Al-Muzammir. Remembrance in praiseworthy coverings. Good tidings to the one who trusts in the most merciful, Tawakkul. This is cardinal. An example of divine article in my arsenal, my armory is garbed in ascetic parchments. I write as I started. I am a poetical wordsmith, penning metaphysical incandescence, a forge master of writing fluorescence for the majesty, for his master, reciting uncreated light himself. Because I can only flow when I am in his presence. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. MashaAllah, that was really, I mean, <laughs> I'm blown away by that. Jazakallah, I mean, very, very talented, MashaAllah. Um, folks, this is Ramadan Radio, 87.7 FM, coming to you live from the heart of Leicester City. The City of Champions and joining us today in the studio is Asim the Poet, uh, Leicester's homegrown talent and one to watch out for in the future. And uh, he's talking about poetry and Islam and all this great stuff. And if you want to get involved, or if you'd like to ask Asim a question or maybe um, if you have a, a comment or a thought about his poetry, then send us a text on 077-488-55055 or even better, Give us a call on Leicester 0116-482-2086. Now, you can listen to Ramadan FM in a multitude of ways. There's the traditional wireless radio on 87.7 frequency, or you can check us out on your smart speaker by just saying, hey, Siri, play Ramadan FM, or OK Google, play Ramadan FM, or Alexa, play Ramadan FM. Play, not pray, play Ramadan FM. Uh, I'm struggling today, as you can tell, Asim. Obviously not as eloquent as your good self. Um, but you can also download the TuneIn app and you can check us out live on YouTube, Facebook, Insta, all of that, all of that, all of that. Right, so back to Asim there. Uh, what was that piece called that you just recited? This one's called Presence. Present, amazing. And really kind of humbling when you think about who, who we are in the presence of, um, especially during this glorious month. Um, and I just want to talk a bit more about your work and sort of, you know, this, this journey that you've been on, Alhamdulillah, and, and long may it continue. And, you know, I'm expecting big things from you. So no pressure, bro. No pressure. Yeah. Talk a bit about your, your first book. So you're about, you're writing your, your second book, but you've also had another book published. Tell us a bit about that. Okay. So this was a bit of a surprise. Um, I have a disclaimer about this book. Uh, this is no way to put any men down because I get a lot of <laughs> comments from women about this. Um, I wrote a, uh, as a surprise for my wife that I married in uh, end of December. Okay. Last year. I wrote her a poetry book. Mashallah. Had it published and available on Amazon. You know what? You're going to make the rest of us look bad now. Exactly. Yeah? Exactly okay. what I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, I had it published, alhamdulillah. Um, and I made it as a centerpiece surprise for her on every single table on the wedding day. So the poetry book was dedicated to her. Mashallah. Um, that was the first book, alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay. So, you know what? That's... Where, 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 where do I go from that? You know, guy writes a poetry book for his, uh, his, uh, his beloved, his begum, as they, as they say. And, uh, okay, I, I've got nowhere I can go. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on to the second book. Then. What's, the, what's been the inspiration behind it? And uh, when is it going to be published? Alhamdulillah. Uh, just a bit of backtrack from the first part. Uh, I want to say to everyone, ladies, just remember, every man expresses love in a different way. Please don't take this okay, as that's a the disclaimer line, right or, there, or folks. a bar or anything like that at all. <laughs> Uh, the second book, inshallah, is uh, due coming for uh, this Rabi al Awal. So I'm hoping to launch this book in the in the praise and love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, for you guys uh, here today, as I've done a very a very exclusive, a very rare exclusive, in fact, I don't really touch upon or even talk about this book just yet. But here we go. Um, it is going to be launched in Rabi al Awal in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and it's known as, it's going to be called a love letter, a flowing poetry book, all connected from one poem to the next all inspired by various different sources and different words, different uh, quotes and different prompts. Uh, but inshallah, you, it's one to watch because it's going to have a lot of pieces which are unreleased, never been seen, never been heard before. Okay, and uh, I suppose with any good release, are you going to be doing any sort of promo tours or visits or events? Is there anything happening? Or is that something you'd like to do? So if anyone's listening right now, get in touch. Alhamdulillah. There's a few things uh, behind the scenes that are going on. But nothing I can see at the moment. Okay, well, bro, listen, when that happens, yeah, you got Inshallah. me, yeah? You got Inshallah. me? Inshallah. All right, look at teasing each other. Now, listen, that, that's fantastic, and we're going to look out for that, inshallah, in the next couple of months when that's ready for release. Um, I want to go back a bit. So you've been on BBC Radio 4 as part of this uh, show called Poets in the Pulpit, a kaleidoscope of stories, confessions, etc. 
Give us a bit of insight into that. So poets in the pulpit is actually there's two separate things. Kaleidoscope. Was oh, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. I thought it was part of the same no, one. No, that's okay. So uh, poets in the pulpit was an exploration about traditional poetry in Islam compared to modern day poetry. Now, if we look at traditional poetry, we're looking at the nats and the sheets that we historically know in Arabic, in Urdu, in Persian, and other languages as well, compared to more traditional things that we see. And when I was, uh, sorry, compared to more um, current themes, I guess. And it was a more of a comparison about how we see traditional poetry, such as Qasida Burda, Mawlaya Salli wa Salim Daiman Abadan, Ala Habibika Khayr al Khalki Kullihimi. Those sort of poetry, that poetry or Urdu poetry, or etc., compared to what we normally see, and how we as poets, which was a collective of poets on the show, how we as poets um, fare, how we continue the works, what were uh, entered and what were there in the first place. And that's what it really explored in those senses. My part of the show was really as part of as Salikun, the Nasheed group. We uh, collectively have been reciting Qasida Burda every Thursday without fail, alhamdulillah, uh, for 20 years. Um, we've seen many people come and go, but alhamdulillah, for the close unit group that we have, uh, we do have this continuously been recited. And with Qasida Burda at the heart of our forefront of everything that we do, uh, that has been a biggest, one of the biggest inspirations for me as a poet of writing uh, more current stage poetry of what I do. Mashallah. And let's go to the text now. So uh, uh, someone has texted in saying, inspiring show. Poetry has layers which have different meanings to different people. It's reflective. I suppose it's like a painting. Is that right, Asim? Absolutely. Um, every po- every If you look at, uh, if you've ever been into a, um, an art gallery, actually stood in front of a po- uh, painting itself, you will find layers upon layers, different textures, different works, understanding the meaning of why the artists have done uh, has, has drawn or painted or uh, even sculpted in some instances how a piece should actually be. But in poetry, it works in exactly the same way. Whether the, um, the metaphors are there, whether it works in a certain rhyme scheme, whether there's certain word plays, um, even, even, the, even the, uh, the flows itself, they all work in different layers in itself as well. Okay, great. So we've had some more text come in. I think this is on our uh, Facebook page. Is that right? Um, uh, and uh, people are just tuning in um, So we've already touched upon this But very quickly A couple of listeners have asked What, what, has, what has inspired you to write poetry So just very briefly Just recap sure. their inspiration please. Sure. So my inspiration came from uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu And the Sahaba How they stood up for justice And also for Rasulullah Sallallahu Positivity, motivation And how he constantly inspires hope Into all the Ummah itself And I, I hope only to echo Such words through my words Inshallah. Okay, so that's just uh, a recap of what has inspired uh, Brother Asim here. Um, I'd like to hear from some youngsters. So youngsters out there, if you're thinking about writing poetry or if you are writing poetry and would like to ask uh, Asim a question or maybe even speak to him, give us a call on 0116-482-2086. Or if you're feeling shy, you can always WhatsApp us on 077-488-55055. I think it's great, you know, People are looking and exploring all these creative um, avenues and, and elements within Islam and poetry. You know, it's very soothing to the listener, very relaxing to the listener, very personal to the, the composer, the writer, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, what would you say to anyone who is thinking about writing poetry or would like to write poetry, but is maybe feeling a bit, shy or embarrassed because you know what what our our youngsters are like oh you're a poet this yeah. and that you know they're not the most encouraging yeah. but what message would you like to give to our youngsters or anyone actually who's thinking of doing it when you say writing poetry do you mean exp- as in spoken word as well spoken or word or nasheed writing? anything like that one thing i would say and this is one of the advices i was given on the very start when you are right when you are reciting remember who you are really truly in front of yeah Allah and nothing no one else exists and when you recite sometimes even if it doesn't specifically become isn't specifically a Islamic piece or poetry or praise or anything like that you may be expressing poetry that is helpful towards your mind to your heart to that expression to remove whatever's inside your heart and mind and out to manifest it out whether it's on a piece of paper even speaking about this it's the what I like to call the cheapest tool for mental health to be able to express yourself and to be able to do that 
whether it's personal or whether it's doing it in front of an audience, you do not know how many other people are living the same um, pathway that you are as well. So you expressing your forms of what you're feeling inside could inspire somebody else to do it. And I've found that within myself. I was inspired in the same manner and I hope to carry on that chain. But for anyone who's listening, I would definitely say, even if you're writing by yourself, just write, express yourself. Do not be afraid. You don't even have to share it with anyone because this will be one of the greatest tools for yourself to help you understand what you're going through, what you're feeling, and maybe able to provide you some sort of uh, way out of your situation that you're going through. Great stuff. So that's really important that you touched on mental health. We had a uh, brother Muhammad Kolia uh, come on uh, recently talking about mental health and Islam. And I suppose an out, seeing this as an outlet of uh, expression or creativity, whatever it might be, I guess it's like exercise. You know, you, you go for a run or you do something and you, and you instantly feel better. And I found myself as well writing something. It's almost as if a load is lifted off exactly. your, your shoulders or you feel lighter as a result of, of going through that process. And sometimes yeah. it, it doesn't even have to make sense. You were just writing and expressing and then you can arrange the, 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 the logic afterwards. Um, I wanted to ask you, who, who have been your sort of, who are your favourite poets, artists or inspirations? You talked about Omar Suleiman. Are there any others? Is that currently or in the past? Let's start with, with, with past and then we'll move on to the current ones. Okay, so for me, one of the greatest... Um, Poet himself is Hassan bin Sabit, the Prophet's poet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He, if you read into his story and understand how he was, all he did was write praises upon Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or defended Islam just through word. Mm. That's mm. how eloquent poetry can be. It can move such hearts that are firm like a stone and seep into them and make them so soft, understand the true love of Islam. And that's what Hassan bin Sabit used to do. But many other poets as well. For example, Qab ibn Zuhair, another poet, a prophet's poet. And many of the Sahaba, they also wrote poetry. Not necessarily Islamic poetry, but many of them did write poetry as well. Uh, but many from the past, of course, Jalal al-Rumi. Of course, um, uh, Imam Buseri himself, uh, who wrote Qasida Burda. And there's endless amount of people as well. For myself, I've always delved more into the Arabic side of things. But only up till, I would say, a few years ago, when I started seeing things on YouTube, for, my, for myself, as mentioned a few times, although not being my native tongue, I've been able to see captions and people understand, uh, 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 write uh, translations of that. Okay, language. just going to jump in there. We've got a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum, caller. You're through to Ramadan FM. Wa alaikum assalam. It's Raza speaking. Oh, Raza, assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah. It's really good to hear from you. I wasn't expecting you, but I'm so <laughs> pleased that you've, uh, you've rung in. What would you like to ask Asim the poet? My, my question to Asim, I'm very impressed with uh, his work or whatever. Asim, have you written any work whilst you was in Medina or in the presence of uh, His Majesty? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is actually... Um, Subhanallah, I can't believe you've asked this. The first book I've ever written was actually there in Medina, which I've never right. released. I've kept it very personal to myself. So when I went in, in 2017, I had the honor of going Umrah. And uh, yeah. when I was in Medina, I was there for 11 nights by myself. Mm -hmm. And when I entered uh, the Blessed Grounds, I began writing in a, in, a, in a book itself. And away from everyone and anything, I was in front of the Blessing the blessed him one himself, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I just wrote, and in mm -hmm. eleven nights I completed a book. Um, Mashallah. So alhamdulillah, yes. Uh, uh, to answer your question, yes, I have. But subhanallah. No, so, thank you very much for sharing that because I know that those moments are very precious and they are very individual. And I didn't really want you to sort of go into too much detail, but I just wondered whether you had written some work and uh, whether you were able to share any of that work. Alhamdulillah. Um, those pieces, like I said, were written. Uh, I don't actually have the book. I've got it stored away somewhere safe. But right. as mentioned, we do have an, I have a new book coming out soon, Rabbi Lowell. So in six months' time, I have got a book specific dedicated for the beloved one himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with all these pieces, uh, there's going to be all uh, new material that's never been seen, never been heard before, inshallah. Inshallah, I look forward to that. And uh, I'll get the details wherever it's uh, been published or being sold and uh, try and get a copy of this. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy, Raza. Listen, how are you? How's family? Uh, family is all well, alhamdulillah. I've just been recovering from this cold. 
this uh, cost still, but other than that, alhamdulillah, all is well. Well, listen. And um, some of the points that you touched upon, yeah. um, you know, uh, if one knows, it, it, it sort of uh, uh, synchronizes with me as well. And uh, that intense love for the Prophet Sallallahu and that connection with the Prophet is is there. And I wish everybody has that same one that. Uh, uh, Amen. We have. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, it's so good to hear from you, Raza. Jazakallah for your call, and we'll catch up soon, inshallah. 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 Take, Take care. Assalamu as alaikum. That was, uh, as well. that was uh, lovely to hear from a, a friend, someone you don't expect to call in. So, the Raza Hussain is, is a very good friend of mine. We've got another text coming. Mashallah, Asim. May Al Wadud continue to fill your heart with love for Islam, our Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa and the, all those around you. Can you say a bit more about the mental health benefits of poetry? Well, you, you, you're smiling. Do you know this person? I'm that's guessing. My wife. Okay, Mrs. Asim. That's it. Well done. First of all, well done for actually texting in uh, as per my request. And uh, you've, he's blushing. Look at him. Oh, this is on camera. He's blushing. Look at him. Oh, look at his face. Do you know what? I'm proud to blush. Good. All right. Well, listen. Let's go back to uh, what, what uh, your good lady has, has asked about the mental health benefits of poetry. I've seen it myself where. Those who are really shy, scared, afraid to even express themselves, mm. being able to write it down, be able to express it in front of audiences, they may feel the, mo- the most safest place to be in those, uh, those um, audiences, those spaces that give us, those, uh, give us that avail- availability to be able to do that. And all those issues that we may be facing, as mentioned, you're not the only one to face what you're going mm-hmm. through. Everyone around us, we all share a number of different trials and tribulations that we all go through secretly, but we don't express them. But by writing these down, by expressing this, you will help find it so much beneficial for yourself as well as others as well. So as mentioned, I would definitely recommend something by writing things down because it's helped me in my own past itself. When I used to be bullied as a child, I had no one to talk to. And when I started writing things out, it made sense to me what, I, what I'm going through. What, what I can do to get help and what I can do to move forward. And it genuinely helped me. And I, I, I very eagerly ask all the listeners who may be facing any type of struggle to do the same thing. Okay, so um, that's really important because I suppose, you know, even if you don't share it with anyone, just write it down for yourself first and foremost and get that off your thing and, and express everything because it is an outlet. You know, it's like writing a diary, a journal or whatever it might be. Um and, uh, you know, I, I want our youngsters, especially if they are going through a difficult time to, to really take solace and, and take um, encouragement from that. Um, we're coming to the end of the show, I see in about seven minutes or so. So I'd like you to do another piece, but not just yet before we come to another piece uh, to close up with. Um, just tell our listeners where they can follow your work and what platforms you're on. Inshallah. Um, so I'm on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Twitter, which I don't really use, uh, all at Asim the Poet, A-S-I-M, the Poet. And inshallah, there'll be more content, more um, features that are happening this year. Like I said, book launches. I've got uh, pay, uh, uh, certain uh, events that have been booked in for headline slots. Also, I'm part of certain um, shows that are due to come up during the uh, during this year. And a number of things I can't yet say but inshallah, um, you'll see. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. So make sure you check out uh, Asim and all of and, and subscribe, like, follow. I don't know what, what the youngsters do. I'm, as you can tell, Asim, I'm an old man. Oh, no, no. This is something my kids would be into. So uh, I, I'm going to go home and make sure that they check out some of your work. Um, I forgot what I was going to ask you now. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know, while I remember the question, um, let's have another uh, one. Of, uh, let's have another recitation of one of your poems, Bismillah. please. This piece uh, is inspired, um, as I mentioned, sometimes randomly getting inspired in the middle of um, in this, this particular one in the middle of the night, and um, woke up two o'clock in the morning and I start writing it. Alhamdulillah, this piece is all about the praise of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My muse, my mouth moistened marvelously, mentioning Maulid, melodies moving masterfully, mere murmurs of mercy mean myriad meanings, measuring multiple markups. Mundifying misdeeds and mistakes and mounting metaphysical mantles. Meanwhile, manifesting medicine majestically and morphing my mayhems, menaces and mundane miseries. Understand. Obtaking unique utterances are unmatched, undisputed or upheld. 
ultimately unleashing your undeniable, unwavering unity, uplifting unfathomable, unimaginable utopian universes internally and uncovering the unseen, unrested, upgrading, unveiling unconscious units, the undisputed uniform of the unbreakable, unshakable, uncrowned kings, uphold undying utters be an erring how heartfully. And you will be happier than a hundred hajis, where historical heroes' hopes happen and hadith highlights harboring a helping hand in the hereafter. Henceforth, hallmark your heart, harmonizing holy hymns habitually, hortative, honestly, holistically heal, he hears, he hears, he hears. Honeyed, sent, heavenly, sent, heaven, sent, at heart, hold. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Adhering to the ayah Accompanying the almighty and ambia actions in an always acceptable anthem abundantly In appreciation and adoration? Absolutely Anytime, any place, anywhere An affectionate affair Across all Father Adam advancing after Armageddon Accepted as attached to affinity as I aspire Association with the altruist Ameen as he is the meaning of my monologues, my manuscripts, my motivation magnificent, my messenger magnificent, my mediator, mercy of mankind, the mentor of Muslims, magnanimous mannerisms, modest, model of man, more than a million marvelous merits and medals, yet my mere mentions are maliloquent, mesmerizing my molecules and minerals, so I motion to monumental moments, making moves, Makkah to Medina migration, my master's motive, monotheistic mission. Managing, motivating, morale and mood, meanwhile, meditating in mountains, I marvel at miracles. Moon splitting, mirage, mounting a mythical beast, meeting Masu messengers, but more so in the midst of the most majestic, most merciful. The manifestation of momentous manuscript. Multitudes of magniloquent messages and mu'ajaza, maneuvering my mysticism, more so by mentioning the magnified Madad, Ahmad. I am awestruck in auspicious achievements, in appreciation and adoration, asserting an accumulation of abundance of affirmations, aiming to anchor an ageless abode alongside the angels in amazement, ascribing amicably, audibly, animated, anyhow being an aura of the adorer, airing affection attentively, as I declare dignified Jews defending defiantly. My description of my duty, deeds, duas and dreams are due to him. Doubts, delusions and dismays disappear. My description... My- Thou solutions and dismays disappear. Delivering dev- delightful devotions as a discipline, decreasing defeat in distance of him. So my departure of dunya, my death, my dun- this dunya become a delightful dimension. So in reply to that third question, I can repl- I can I can declare he delivered the true doctrine of the only deity, the didact, delivering divine decree, displaying dedication definitively, but my deliverance is distraughtful. Designation of this is only divine. This is why his praise is perennial. So, in abundance of salutations, we must recite Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi. MashaAllah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beautiful, absolutely mind blowing. Jazakallah khair. I noticed there's a lot of alliteration in your work, which is probably, I think, one of your, your trademarks, right? But we have got a text coming in. Assalamu alaikum, brothers Irfan and Asim. Thank you for such an interesting and inspiring show, mashallah. It's wonderful to hear from someone who is successfully engaging in the arts without compromising their faith. Hear, hear. It would be great to have more programs about creativity, especially as a tool for supporting our spirituality and mental well-being. And that is from Sister Nazira in Highfields. I know who that is. She's my one and only listener. So at least one person heard what you're saying. <laughs> but now, Jazakallah to Nazira. Big shout out to you and the family. Hope you're all well. But no, absolutely right. And hopefully, inshallah, I can't say too much, but we are going to get another guest maybe in the next couple of weeks talking about something else which is sort of has its roots steeped in Islamic history in terms of creativity. We've got a minute left in the show, which just means that thank you so much for coming in. Jazakumullah khair. Asim, listen, I wish you all the very best. Keep in touch with me, keep in touch with the radio station and let us know how you progress. And inshallah, we'll get you back again very, very soon next time we're on air. But uh, before we go, very quickly, what's your message to our listeners? Stay hopeful. Never give up. And keep bringing salawat. 
That's it. Well, you know, that is the perfect way to end today's program. Folks, this has been Ramadan 87.7 FM with me, Irfan M in Drive Time. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow. Make sure you check us out on YouTube and like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. I'll be back again with another guest who I can't remember right now. But listen, we're going to have, uh, you know, I like to shake it up on this program. So make sure you tune in every day, Monday to Friday, 5 to 6 p.m. for Drive Time here on Ramadan Radio 87.7 FM. My thanks once again to uh, Asim the Poet. Uh, we look forward to seeing your book being published. And inshallah, I wish you a very good remainder of Ramadan and a beautiful first Eid with your beautiful new bride. So uh, have a good one, my brother. And